There is no one definition for the word terrorism. Various federal agencies, including the FBI, Department of State, and Department of Homeland Security, all use different definitions of the term, not to mention international organizations, foreign governments, and various news outlets. However, despite this ambiguity, the word terrorism has become a ubiquitous part of American life. Everyone knows the word, but no one can agree on its meaning. In our Violence Here and Abroad episode, I explore the topic of terrorism and violence at greater length. However, in this episode, I will focus on the media, which has played a unique role in shaping how Americans think and talk about terrorism. Specifically, I will focus on debates concerning the relationship between the American news media, the coverage of events labeled as acts of terror, and American perceptions of Islam. News coverage of politically or religiously motivated violence increased massively after the attacks on September 11th in 2001. However, during this period, the news media has not covered all acts of violence equally. Although Muslims commit only a small fraction of mass attacks, one study found that news outlets devote four and a half times as much coverage to acts of violence committed by Muslims as they do to acts committed by non-Muslims. There are many factors behind the rise in media coverage of mass attacks and the disproportionate coverage of mass attacks by Muslims. These can include the biases of individual journalists. However, scholars believe that institutional factors, such as the 24-hour news cycle and the rise of business-oriented journalism, have likely played a greater role in these trends. In other words, when people see reports about an Islamic terrorist attack on television or online, they become concerned about attacks by Muslims. People concerned about this type of attack are then more likely to click on articles covering that topic or remain on a channel replaying footage of an attack. Because more clicks and longer screen time result in more advertising revenue, media outlets are incentivized to increase their coverage of attacks carried out by Muslims. This increase inspires more concern, which inspires more clicks, and so the feedback loop continues. The dramatic increase in media coverage of attacks committed by Muslims has had many negative effects. In fact, some scholars have argued that the guarantee of media coverage encourages similar attacks and has led to more violence. According to this argument, violent organizations deliberately plan or encourage attacks with no obvious strategic benefit because they can be assured of instant and widespread media attention, which will increase their visibility, name recognition, and thus, hopefully, their recruitment. In addition to increasing the potential audience for attackers, the disproportionate coverage of attacks committed by Muslims may play a role in negative perceptions of Islam in the United States. While polls vary depending on the exact question asked, in 2015, one poll revealed that 61% of Americans hold negative views of Islam. And although many Americans who hold negative views of Islam do not act on those feelings, some do, and the FBI has recorded a steady increase in anti-Muslim assaults in the years following 2001. And although not all Muslims living in the United States have been the victims of a direct assault, Many report feeling that they are under a constant pressure to prove that they are not terrorists. This pressure places them between a rock and a hard place. If they do not continually denounce violence, non-Muslims may find them suspect. But each time they do denounce acts of violence, they reinforce the idea that they are somehow affiliated with violent people and therefore speak on their behalf. To conclude, the distortions and pressures of our current political discourse about Islam and violence present a series of ethical implications for anyone who either produces or consumes news media. On the one hand, journalists and media producers have to make a choice between coverage of events that are certain to appeal to their viewers and therefore attract more clicks, more views, and more revenue, and coverage that is accurate, contextualized, and balanced. Meanwhile, those of us who consume media have choices to make about the kinds of stories we watch, read, and search for, the demands we make of journalists, and the kinds of criticisms we level at the individuals and organizations who mediate our relationship with the world.